Once you get too many rules, that will stifle innovation. The saying from Alphabet's former president, Sergey Brin, reflects exactly what the FAA did to hinder SpaceX Starship's progress. Of course, SpaceX's success in outsmarting the FAA to launch Flight 5 as scheduled doesn't mean the political battle will end here. By contrast, it will even get worse in the future unless we act quickly. That's what Elon Musk referred to in his recent tweet after Launch 5. Find out in today's TechMap episode. Mentioning the success of Starship Flight 5, we not only talk about an unprecedented record in spaceflight, catching a 71-meter tall rocket booster in midair with Mechazilla chopsticks, but also about SpaceX's triumph over one of America's worst nightmares, red tape. Why is the bureaucracy one of America's worst nightmares? Unfortunately, we continue to be stuck in a reality where it takes longer to do the government paperwork to license a rocket launch than it does to design and build the actual hardware. As we all know, building the largest and most advanced rocket like Starship is no easy work. Take, for example, in the preparation for Flight 5, SpaceX spent more than 12,000 hours replacing the entire thermal protection system with newer generation tiles. More notably, SpaceX has developed the heat shield for many years and has experienced many bitter failures in four previous test flights. Not to mention the thousands of other important pieces of hardware that go into making a complete rocket. Elon also affirmed that the Starship project absorbs more of his mental energy than probably the other single thing. And until now, when Starship is gradually getting reliable, a more challenging obstacle comes. Regulation. Ironically, the only threat to this is regulation. Don't forget, one of the hardest things about this was getting FAA and government approval. Many have expressed similar concerns about the negative impact of regulation on innovation. However, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Bureaucratic red tape must give way to a historic aerospace launch in October. More awesome, the FAA will not require any investigation as a result of Flight 5, because all flight events for both the Starship vehicle and the Super Heavy booster occurred within the scope of planned and authorized activities. No investigation would significantly shorten the gap between Flight 5 and Flight 6. Also, the U.S. federal agency has already approved a launch license for SpaceX to fly the next Starship with the same mission profile as Sunday's test flight. This has made Dan Huot, a SpaceX communications manager, excited more than ever. Ship just gave us one heck of a show, making it through a controlled re-entry this time. Flaps intact, made it down to the water, he said. Starships are meant to fly. It sure as hell flew today. So let's get ready for the next one. Jared Isaacman, the SpaceX partner at Polaris Dawn, also sees this as a winning for SpaceX over regulation. However, the FAA approving a launch license for SpaceX to fly the next Starship with the repeated mission profile doesn't mean the upcoming flight will go totally smoothly. SpaceX follows an iterative development process, meaning it will take lessons learned from Sunday and apply them to the next flight. Some elements of the next mission will likely change, and this would be a seed for the potential tension between SpaceX, the FAA, and even other organizations in the future. Jared Isaacman doesn't rule out this possibility. I criticized the California Commission yesterday for impeding SpaceX's progress, but respectfully suggested we take just today to celebrate the greatest engineering feat in recent history. Unlocking the secrets of the universe should transcend politics. Besides, the political battle will still be there tomorrow. For SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, the situation will be even worse if Trump doesn't win the presidential election in November. If Trump is not elected, the slow strangulation by overregulation will stop humanity from reaching Mars. He has a point. By endorsing former President Donald Trump in this year's presidential election, Elon Musk and his companies have become targets of retaliation from organizations with political force behind them. It explains why Musk continuously criticized the political motives behind the FAA's oversight of SpaceX. America is being smothered by legions of regulators, often inept and politically driven. Musk wrote on X, referring to the FAA. This skepticism increasingly became more obvious when the FAA deliberately pushed Starship Flight 5 before late November, whereas the national election is set to be held on early month. And more comically, the reason driven for the decision seems to be, well, unfathomable. It understands that such a unique operation would require additional time to analyze from a licensing perspective, SpaceX wrote on its website. Instead of focusing resources on unfortunately critical safety analysis and collaborating on rational safeguards to protect both the public and the environment, the licensing process 
has been repeatedly derailed by issues ranging from the frivolous to the patently absurd. This is obviously not the first time the SpaceX CEO has been outspoken in his criticism of the FAA. On X, SpaceX previously shared its grievances. For nearly two years, SpaceX has voiced its concerns with the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry. It is clear that the agency lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials, but also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These distractions continue to directly threaten national priorities and undercut American industry's ability to innovate. Clearly, these fierce acts of resistance by SpaceX are just a question of time before the company loses patience with the U.S. national agency. This ultimately has forced SpaceX to go to court with the FAA. SpaceX will be filing suit against the FAA for regulatory overreach, Elon tweeted on September 17th. Suing means that SpaceX will go through the discovery process with the FAA, which means their lawyers get to look at a lot of internal material, like internal communications. They are doing this because they hope to uncover evidence of political lobbying against SpaceX. I am highly confident that discovery will show improper, politically motivated behavior by the FAA, he said. The FAA has made a big mistake by delaying SpaceX's launches just to punish Elon Musk. Why can I say that confidently? On the 10th of October, 1967, the Outer Space Treaty entered into force, definitely manifesting human desire for space exploration and activities to transcend national interests, political agendas, and conflicts. The treaty establishes space as the province of all mankind, promoting peaceful exploration and prohibiting the appropriation of celestial bodies by any one nation. Notably, the treaty came just six months after the most tragic space accident of the Cold War, which witnessed the Vladimir Komarov cosmonaut fall from space, making him the first human to die in a space flight. His death was deemed caused by the Soviets' vain impatience in developing Soyuz 1 against the 10-manned Gemini space missions the U.S. launched between 1965 and 1966. Komarov's terrible death also clearly depicts the aftermath of intertwining pure space exploration with political motivations. Despite a clear awareness of the harmful effects of politicizing space, at present some regulatory bodies like the FAA still impose bureaucratic delays that, some argue, are retaliation against individuals with political conflicts of interest with them and their parties. Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, has been famous recently for supporting Donald Trump. It's likely the root cause for the significant regulatory hurdles that his rocket company SpaceX has faced. And this, in Elon's own words, is smothering America. America is being smothered by legions of regulators, often inept and politically driven. However, the idea of targeting SpaceX just to punish Elon is a misguided one. While Elon Musk is widely recognized as the founder and driving force behind SpaceX, it is important to acknowledge that the company is not solely possessed by him. Elon Musk himself also affirms that he just owns about 40% of SpaceX. The remaining ownership is distributed among various institutional investors and early team members, including notable stakeholders like Alphabet, Google's parent company, which holds around 7.5% of the company. Therefore, any action that hinders SpaceX's development development is a violation of the law, unfairly punishing the legitimate interests of other shareholders. Additionally, while Musk's ownership stake is considerable, it is important to recognize that SpaceX is a collaborative effort involving many talented engineers and executives who contribute to its success. When Musk founded SpaceX in 2002, he was joined by several key engineers and early employees, such as Tom Mueller, who was responsible for developing rocket engines, and Gwynne Shotwell, who became the company's president President and COO. Afterward, in April 2023, SpaceX hired former NASA human spaceflight chief Kathy Luters to take over as a general manager of the company's Starbase facility in South Texas, where the development of the giant Starship Deep Space Transportation System is centered. In this position, she reports directly to SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwynne Shotwell. Since then, Elon Musk has seemed less active in providing updates on Starship's operations, demonstrating a major reorganization, where Elon no longer holds a key role in the premier center for the Starship Mega Rocket. In this way, he can focus on his other company's projects. To be honest, it's not the first time a significant reorganization has been undergone in SpaceX's Texas. In 2022, there was a notice that SpaceX President and CEO Gwen Shotwell and Vice President Mark Juncosa 
two of the most influential executives at the company, would oversee the facility and operations of the company's Starbase location. Both of them seemingly stepped in for Elon Musk as the CEO shifted his focus to Twitter, meaning that Elon Musk would step back from some of his day-to-day -day at this spaceport. Twitter by then was in a precarious position after the Tesla CEO and SpaceX founder had purchased the social media platform for an inflated price of $44 billion, saddling it with immense debt. The immediate implementation of far-reaching changes, or threats of changes, scared off existing advertisers, slashing the company's already tenuous revenue, and Musk himself admitted that the company as it stood was losing billions of dollars per year and could face bankruptcy if it's planned to charge a subscription for a verification badge a service that was, in theory, previously free, was not highly successful. Musk's plan at that time was to appoint Gwen Shotwell to officially assume oversight of the company's Starship program and Starbase facilities. Additionally, SpaceX CEO Mark Juncosa, an engineer who had successfully led the Starlink program since Musk fired several cautious CEOs in 2018, has assumed technical leadership of the Starship program in the summer of 2022. For that reason, the FAA targeting Elon Musk through SpaceX is a wrong strategy, since, in fact, they are actually attacking those like Kathy Luters, Gwyn Shotwell, Mark Juncosa, and thousands of other workers. They all work day and night to serve the national interest, including NASA's Artemis program. Starship's early test flights played a vital role in making the rocket reliable as soon as possible and allowed SpaceX and NASA to test more complex technology, such as in-space refueling, required to make the Artemis lunar landings possible. In the long distant future, once the gigantic rocket is able to carry humans to the moon, America will have more opportunity to win China in the new space race. China aims to land its astronauts on the moon by 2030, and NASA Administrator Bill Nelson wants U.S. astronauts to return to the lunar surface first. However, given the delay of Artemis due to hardware readiness and the red tape, it would be hard for that dream to come true. We all want to see America triumph again in this century, but we don't want to see any more accidents caused by the go fever approach. Of course, SpaceX has ramped up itself to keep up with that goal, and the FAA as well as the government should highly estimate the company's effort and desire. Unfortunately, another move of the FAA and the government even makes things much more complicated as they are also irresponsible in protecting the rights of private U.S. companies, typically SpaceX in another country. You probably won't forget the story of Starlink in August, as a Brazilian Supreme Court justice, Alexandra de Morris, blocked the financial accounts of Starlink in Brazil. For those who don't know, he and U.S. tech billionaire Elon Musk have a months-long feud over content moderation on X in Brazil. De Moraes has ordered certain accounts suspended for allegedly spreading disinformation, which Musk has challenged as censorship. More ridiculously, while their conflict just relates to X, Brazil's Supreme Court has blocked the bank accounts of Elon Musk's Starlink services. Tech lawyer Preston Byrne wrote on X, This is some really lawless stuff coming out of Brazil. SpaceX is not Elon Musk. He has about half the cap table. The rest is owned by private investors. He also criticized the U.S. government's irresponsibility in protecting the rights of private U.S. companies. If the U.S. government were doing its job, it would use diplomacy to put a stop to this overnight. This resulted in SpaceX's latest movement in early September, when satellite-based internet service provider Starlink backtracked and said it would accept and enforce a Brazilian Supreme Court justice's order to block the Elon Musk billionaire's social media platform, X, regardless of the illegal treatment of Starlink in freezing our assets. We are complying with the order to block access to X in Brazil, the company statement said. We continue to pursue all legal avenues, as are others who agree that Alexandra's recent order violate the Brazilian constitution. Musk has been relentlessly posting in recent days, lambasting De Morris as a criminal. This evil tyrant is a disgrace to judges' robes. Musk wrote on X alongside a photo of De Morais, some 17 hours before Starlink announced its decision to comply with the order. Of course, the tension between SpaceX and the FAA isn't new. On X, SpaceX previously shared its grievances. 
For nearly two years, SpaceX has voiced its concerns with the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry. It is clear that the agency lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials, but also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These distractions continue to directly threaten national priority and undercut American industry's ability to innovate. Clearly, these fierce acts of resistance by SpaceX are just a question of time before the company loses patience with the U.S. national agency. This ultimately has forced SpaceX to go to court with the FAA. SpaceX will be filing suit against the FAA for regulatory overreach, Elon tweeted on September 17. Suing means that SpaceX will go through the discovery process with the FAA, which means their lawyers get to look at a lot of internal material, like internal communications. They are doing this because they hope to uncover evidence of political lobbying against SpaceX. I am highly confident that discovery will show improper, politically motivated behavior by the FAA, he said. The tool allowing the FAA to delay the Starship Flight 5 is the Part 450 regulation, which went into effect in March 2021. SpaceX and other commercial spaceflight companies have faced licensing delays due to this regulatory framework. Dave Cavassa, president of the Commercial Spaceflight Federation, criticized the system, saying, the way it is being implemented today has caused severe licensing delays, confusion, and is jeopardizing our long-held leadership position. Cavosa emphasized that the process is taking years and that companies are getting stuck in an endless back-and-forth process. These delays pose a real threat to the U.S.'s standing in the global space race, as other nations, particularly China, continue to make strides in their own space programs. Alongside Starship's news, let's continue with Falcon 9's updates. The reason for the Falcon 9 upper stage anomaly in the September 28th Crew-9 mission was revealed by SpaceX's Juliana Scheiman. The anomaly took place when the Merlin engine ran 500 milliseconds longer than planned on its deorbit burn, causing the re-entry outside the designated zone. By finding the root cause and then conducting corrective actions for the mishap, SpaceX's Falcon 9 is ready to fly. The FAA has given SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket a green light to return to flight. The Falcon 9 had been grounded since September 28, when the rocket suffered an issue with its upper stage during the launch of the Crew-9 astronaut mission for NASA. The FAA notified SpaceX on October 11 that the Falcon 9 vehicle is authorized to return to regular flight operations, the agency stated. The FAA reviewed and accepted the SpaceX-led investigation findings and corrective actions for the mishap that occurred with the Crew-9 mission. Neither the FAA nor SpaceX elaborated on the findings of that investigation or the corrective actions that resulted from it. When SpaceX announced the incident, the company did not provide any additional updates. The FAA did grant an exception on October 6 that allowed SpaceX to conduct a Falcon 9 launch of the European Space Agency's Hara asteroid mission the following day. The FAA said it allowed that launch to proceed since the upper stage would not re-enter, as it instead propelled Hera on an Earth escape trajectory. That eliminated any public safety concern about a similar deorbit burn anomaly. The launch took place without incident. The agency emphasized at the time that its approval for the Hara launch did not apply to any other Falcon 9 launches. Safety will drive the timeline for the FAA to complete its review of SpaceX's Crew-9 mishap investigation report and when the agency will authorize Falcon 9 to return to regular operations, it said at the time. SpaceX has not announced when it will conduct its next Falcon 9 flight. The company is preparing for the Falcon Heavy launch of NASA's Europa Clipper mission as soon as October 14th from the Kennedy Space Center. But that launch is not licensed by the FAA. The Europa Clipper mission is aimed at investigating Jupiter's icy moon, Europa, to determine if its subsurface environment could support life. Europa is believed to have a global ocean beneath its thick ice shell, and the mission will gather data on the moon's ice, ocean, and geology. These findings will help scientists better understand whether the conditions on Europa could make it a candidate for habitability. This will be NASA's first use of the Falcon Heavy for a flagship planetary mission, thanks to its capability of carrying large payloads on deep space missions. Powered by 9 Merlin 1D, generating more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. As much power as 18747 aircraft, it is billed as the world's most powerful operational booster since NASA's Saturn V. It could carry 63.8 tons to low Earth orbit and 26.7 tons to geosynchronous transfer orbit. 
Mentioning the payload capability to LEO, each SpaceX Triple Core Falcon Heavy booster can launch twice as much cargo into orbit as ULA's Delta IV Heavy and its new Vulcan Centaur rocket. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.